Okay guys, for this video I'm going to show you how to flush mount your inline fabrication flush mount quick change base plates. What does that mean? I'll tell you what this means. This means that okay your gun guy, all gun guys need a place to work on their firearms. This is where uh, that happens for me. So whether I want to do a basic field strip, if I want to tear it all the way down, if I want to mount a simple scope, maybe I want to sharpen a knife. That's what this bench is for. So uh, let's say you don't have as much real estate. I can show you how to take whatever space you work with. You know, maybe it's a full eight foot bench like this, right? This is what I'm doing. I have two uh, flush mount quick change base plates by inline fabrication. This one is unwrapped. This one is still wrapped. We're going to uh, unwrap it further along in the video so you can see what it looks like uh, when they ship it to you. Uh, and, and I'm going to uh, get these routed down so they're flush mount. So then I can uh, work with my firearm. So a, a little story. Here's a story. So um, as I said, uh, you know, I work on my firearms here. I sharpen knives. I've always got something going on here. Uh, well, a few months back, I needed to mount my gun vise. I really needed my gun vise over here. So, from over here, I unmounted, unbolted one of my base plates, and I brought it over here. I drilled four holes, and I mounted it up. So now, I had something that I could mount my vise to. Pretty smart, right? After I was done, I unbolted it, and I put it back. Well, guess what? Now, I had nothing here. It was so nice, I said, okay, this is what I need to do. I just need to step up and order two plates and get them mounted. But, for those of you who have followed my channel over time, you know that I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these plates, two more, now I have twelve. Uh, guys, I've never flush mounted them, but for this purpose, I'm going to because now not only is this going to enable me to get a couple vices set up on this for uh, working on firearms, but now um, I can, uh, you know, have knives in progress here, cleaning a gun here. They'll be flush mount so I can slide stuff across them. So uh, not only is it going to enable me to swap out. Uh, different tools, but it's just gives me more use of the real estate because they're flush mount. So for this video, I'm going to show you how to flush mount these down. Now, um, I'll tell you guys right now, uh, I am not that guy that does, you know, the fine detailed work with, you know, I can build a bench, I could do an average deck. Past that, guess what? My good buddy, Cody, over at CJM construction. He's going to bring Steve over. Both of them, they're going to do what they do best. They're going to get these routed out. So for this video, what do you say I show you how to get these routed out. Then we're going to, this one is already drilled, but we'll drill this one. I'll show you how to get them mounted in. And uh, then uh, I'll do a little staining on this and we'll see how the end result turns out. What do you say? Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, I'll get uh, Cody and Steve over here. We're going to get this done. Yeah, so I just figured I would the depth of this and so I figured this was quarter inch um, it usually has a plastic plate on it mm -hmm. so I just removed that and then I found these stickers and I thought well put those down yeah and then the distance between yeah there and there seven sixteenths that's awesome so that is so perfect this one I had already had the holes drilled oh you did yeah this one they're not drilled okay so we won't worry well I, I'm just assuming that, that after you route it, it'll be just easy to drill the holes in. Yeah, right? we'll just, we will just can do that right now, too, after we're done. Um, mark them and do it all at once. That way they're, they're flush sitting down. That'll be nice. You mean on, on this one? Yes, yeah, on that one. So basically, Are you saying you want this drilled first? No, we can after we, we're... Yeah, right, right. Yeah, after, yeah, like you yeah. said. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Look at you, man. Okay. Sure. I do have my eyes closed. Right. Yeah. Here you go. Chewing bubble gum. Right? right? Cool. Yeah. I wasn't even looking. <laughs> no hands. Yeah, look. <laughs> Come 
Alright. This um, underneath here. Oh. Just to make sure. Okay. Might as well make sure that this is. I should have made this a little wider, but that'll work. I just wanted to take that thing off. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna have to make multiple passes just because if you yeah. don't, it yeah. it'll blow it all out. It'll take for a while. And, yeah. So we'll go. In other words, you'll go over it and then you'll drop a little mm -hmm. lower. And, yep. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Rock and roll. Okay. That? A shot back? He wants to put that stuff in. I, I got a clean one in there so I could just... I want to... The, I need the, uh, um, the dust. sawdust. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But but I got a vacuum right here. I just think if I clean my shot back, you could suck it all up and just take it out of that. Oh. <laughs> that way you get everything. You know, so you what just, I'll do is when I'm done, I'll vacuum it. I got a... It's not really a shot back, but it's a canister. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It'll work. What's right. That? Right there, my DeWalt. I want to get that out of your way. Uh, yeah, that's cute. Yeah, yeah. it works good. Oh, yeah. yeah, let me get clean this up so I can see what I'm doing. Here. Oh, yeah. Watch out specifically for uh, powder. Powder? Yeah. I'm going to get a clean one, then I can start going a little deeper. Yeah, I'm squared up it is. 
Yeah. Oh, excuse yeah. me. Sardis does it to me. Tells me that it is for that now. We'll just keep going down. That is awesome. Got me. <coughs> What's that? Sardis. <laughs> You have dust everywhere. It's okay. That water tomorrow we get everything clean. It don't matter to me. Uh, you don't know how happy I am. There we go. This is going to start a series on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure we knock off all the little birds. That's why we're in here. That way we get another level six, and when the the plates in there, it'll actually sit nice and neat. What I've learned with these flush mount uh, quick change uh, base plates is the tighter the hole, the more solid it's going to stay when it's on the bench. So I have this rotted out and it's going to hold it just fine, but um, as you see, that's pretty snug. Here's the trick. Okay. Keep it nice and tight. Get it squeezed in. Tap it all the way in so we're flush. Let's verify that uh, we're right at an inch and a half. Beautiful. You're going to come along here like this, be as uh, vertical as you can. You'll drill your first hole, place your first screw into place, you do your second. Put your second one into place. Um, if you feel that this has shifted at all, if you're even second guessing it, you can uh, come back over and, you know, never hurts to, uh, you know, check your measurements. But we're good. If you've done a good job of this, uh, uh, routing this in tight, this isn't going to shift. So if we come over here like this. And that's like that magnet's going to be really handy for when I'm uh, working on uh, guns with little tiny springs. It's right there. That's kind of like the emergency magnet. It's always there to 
put a screw, right? So now um, I'm going to, I'm not going to tighten this down yet because I'm going to do some sanding. I'm going to stain this bench. We're going to make it look really good. It is a beautiful day to uh, do this. It's going to pick a better day. It's not too hot, but yet with the sun shining through, uh, the stain is, is carrying it, uh, really turning out nice. So this is what these uh, flush mount quick change base plates look like when you receive them. Top notch um, inline fabrication does a top-notch job. Well, there's our plate, and this is your uh, your mounting hardware. Now, just know this: if something happens that you have uh, your two by four all the way out to the edge of the bench, just go get these and uh, six. Replace two of these with uh, six-inch screws quarter by 20 thread you're good so all right let's uh, get this last one in really nice okay it's nice and tight as you saw earlier the jigs that we had held the router exactly where we wanted it so we're going to take our It's, it's tight and that's, that's a good thing that's, that's a very good thing that's how you want it well maybe when in doubt there we go the tighter the better. So that's a good thing. Um, so one thing I'll tell you, as I told you earlier in the uh, this video, these were pre-holed, uh, or pre-drilled holes. Um, doing it over, definitely reroute, then drill. That way your holes will line up a little smoother. Um, but that's okay. This is definitely working. So now we got our all the contents to our hardware here. And we get them all threaded on by hand. It's going to be a great bench because there's days that, you know, I'm, I love to open the garage and sit here and work on firearms and you know, have a great view and fresh air coming in and the sunshine. And, you know, let's have the squirrels and the birds and, and all that. So it's really nice. So now I'll have these plates set up to where I can mount a vise or I want to sharpen some knives or I want to just remove it and 
have my bench flush my bench flush mount like this that's that's great that'll work so now what you need 7 sixteenths deep well socket and uh, so initially when you sink these in we're just going to snug them you're not going to torque them all the way down and I'm going to show you how to torque these uh, just like I did the, the first plate here okay there's one My bit has seen better days. Okay, so now this is this is how you want to do this, so you don't you don't uh, mess that uh, Phillips up. Don't uh, torque it down with the, the the drill. Just hold it with the bit and snug it up that way. And there you go. That that's it. Okay. I'll get these last two. You don't have to, you know, torque them down too tight. You don't want to hear the wood crushing. There we go. Last one. That one was didn't need a whole lot. You could just start hearing that, hearing that wood compress and. That's that's all the more you need. And General, now, whoever has a complaint against anyone, <laughs> look, the Lord isn't saying you don't have a complaint. <laughs> the, that's my uh, John MacArthur in the background. I hit my mouse and off he took. And, uh, I'll put a, a link in the description box below. You can check it out. Okay, so there, there's my magnet. This is so great. This is like, just as, as good as it can get right here. So, um, enjoy the rest of the video. I'm going to be getting everything set up on this bench, so follow along, and I appreciate everybody who uh, follow along and uh, see how this turns out. Day three. All right, so uh, these uh, flush mount quick change base plates by Inline Fabrication, this, this whole project, it, it turned out way better than, than I thought it would have. You not with not doing this, uh, I didn't really know what to expect in the way of all the detail. And on the first night, we lost power, and Cody was awesome. He he left his router here, and with learning how he set his jigs up, that enabled me to integrate in. The, the magnets. I was able to just manipulate those jigs to where I could route in these magnets. And these magnets are nice. I mean, you know, it's going to hold uh, small things. Or have things rolling off onto the floor, disassembling a firearm. You got the spring. It's, it's, it's right there. So that turned out really nice. Um, so it's just some of my thoughts, uh, re recaps that would make this installation the easiest. Um, as I had mentioned uh, a couple nights ago when I started this video, this location I had originally temporarily used a couple months ago. So I had already had these four holes pre-drilled, which meant we routed this to fit those holes. On this one, we routed it and then we drilled the holes. I would highly recommend routing and then drilling your holes. Everything lines up, it's perfectly true. Uh, it's just a, a more precise way of doing it. It doesn't mean that this won't work. It just means this is gonna line up a lot easier for you, okay? So, um, the stain, uh, Turned out top knock. Um, I like the I like the rustic look. I, I like that. Um, that's pretty cool. And I like this color. I would say I would probably go with this color again over all the other colors of my benches. It's a good color. Um, it's a uh, 
Here you go. That's the Golden Oak 21-0B. It's a great color. Um, goes on really easy. And so now it's had uh, 24 hours to cure. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get it all set up. I, I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. I'm really excited. So what I'll do, I'm just going to pull that uh, camcorder up here. And I'm going to start putting everything onto this bench, and you guys can follow along and just check it out. Okay, here we go. The magnet system. This is how it works. Take another magnet. There you go. You can remove it. Keep that clean. When you're done, replace it like that. Now, those little parts that you lose, you know, Parts like that, a detent ball. What about those little springs? You know, springs you have on firearms. Right there. That magnet has them. Okay. Here we go. Down to the final lap, guys. This bench build has been on my bucket list for the longest time. And now, once I get this video done, I'm going to set a rifle up on this bench and I am going to have a good time. But for the rest of this video, what I'm going to do is this. As I begin setting all the product up on this bench, I'm going to take a moment and tell the viewers a little bit about each product. And the reason I'm going to do that is over time on my channel through the live streams and the pre-recorded videos I've had so many viewers ask me questions about the products that they see behind me so as I go through each product I'll place a link in the description box below you can click on that link and you can check it out so we're gonna start with this professional grade rifle cleaning kit by Montana Extreme uh, this is an awesome kit it, it's, it's practical and in my opinion it's the most complete and the uh, probably the highest quality kit you can find on the market. Uh, first off, the, uh, this kit comes in uh, either 22 caliber or you can get 30 through 50 caliber. Uh, it comes with a complete uh, full size, uh, fully, you fully assemble your cleaning rod, so it's a full size cleaning rod. And uh, in my opinion, Montana Extreme, they make the best gun cleaning rod there's no other cleaning rod like it. Uh, the other night when Cody and Steve showed up to jump on these benches, Steve took a look at these and he loved them. So far I haven't had one of my viewers that hasn't purchased one of their uh, gun cleaning rods and, and no one has not absolutely loved them. So you get the full size uh, gun cleaning rod. This kit comes with your solvent, your oil, both top quality products and then of course your patches. No one makes a better patch than Montana Extreme. Uh, then their JAG, no one makes a better JAG than Montana Extreme. Go to their website, click on the link below and go take a look at their JAG and you compare them to the competitors and you will see they've clearly got a beat. And then their nylon brush. Guys, their solvent is so powerful you can't run a bronze brush. You'll eat that brush up. So they provide you with a nylon brush with that, you get the scrub brush, you get the hard tools, you get an entire kit. Now you go to the range. If you have an issue and you have to break that rifle down, you can get it cleaned up, get it back in the game. Uh, what an awesome idea for camping and hunting. It's kind of like a must have. And guys, what I do, uh, whenever I go to the range, I never have issues with my firearms, but I always throw it in the truck, I've always got it. And you know what happens more often than not, is someone you're with needs something and you've got it. So it's super handy. Take it back home, set it on your bench, and it's ready to go. So there you go. Professional grade rifle cleaning kit by Montana Extreme. I, I totally recommend it, okay? Now, next. Okay. Here we go. Our Lyman. <laughs> Here we go. Our Tumblr Media. Awesome stuff. Anybody that's been following my channel over time, you know, when I started my channel years back, I was totally against uh, dry tumbling. I didn't want anything 
to do with it. I always wet tumbled, right? Well, uh, now I'm uh, really into dry tumbling. The reason I uh, like to dry tumble is I can get back to the range faster. There's there's less things for me I have to do. I can get right back, get my uh, get everything loaded up, and get right back to the range. It's about being at the range and shooting, right? But what's made it possible is this stuff right here uh, by Lucas. But now I got to tell you this. Um, I got to tell you about this guy, Mark Passmanet from Carbon Arms. Okay, in the description box below, click on the link from Carbon Arms. You will see that Mark has on his website a package. It's the competitor pack by Lucas. And what it is, is a collection of their gun care products and their automotive wax. I'll show you that in just a moment. But it's, a, it's a, a, an accumulation of the Lucas gun care products. And what he's doing is he's offering them at a very reduced price. If you were to buy all those, you'd pay a lot more. So you buy the competitor package and you're set up pretty good. So what happened um, longer than six months ago, Mark sent me some samples. When he sent them to me, I was like, okay, I'm going to use these. I want to see if they're really good. And guess what they were? So they were so good that uh, about a month and a half ago or so, I went over to his website and I ordered two of his competitor packs. I really love that stuff. And there was a reason I ordered two. One of the reasons was Guys, in the world we're in right now, prices on petroleum going up, prices on everything going up, I bought two kits. So I got set up, and I also purchased some extra stuff from him. Um, and so uh, I highly recommend you go over there and check it out because the price I got stuff, I couldn't beat it even with the shipping. So one of the products in that right here, this gunmetal polish, by simply following the instructions on the bottle and mixing it with whatever media you're running, uh, I've learned that if I run it for one hour, when I pull uh, air, my cases out in one hour, man, they look great. They are ready to roll. But what I've learned, in addition to that, now what I do, this is the Lucas Slick Mist. You also get this in the competitor pack. Uh, what this is, this is an automotive wax. I gotta tell you, it works really good and it's easy to use. Wax has come a long way. It's, it's a whole different world, right? But there's two more things I do with this wax. Uh, one of them is, is after one hour of tumbling my cases in my media, I add six to eight squirts of this, and then I restart it for 20 minutes, and when my brass comes out, it's super slick. And man, it runs through my dies. It is, it just freely runs through the dies. Even on my progressive press, it makes a huge difference. So it really makes things nice. I'll tell you the other thing I do with this. There's another product I'll show you by Lucas pretty quick. It's a, it's a solvent. It's their bore solvent. I clean my dies with that. And after I clean it, I put some of this on some of my uh, bore patches, my, um, my big bore patches. I run that through the resized die, and it puts a slickness on that die and it sizes like no other die. It's good stuff. So uh, this is also in that competitor pack. So very good. So now, um, all right, this is kind of funny. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I'll see something that nobody else wants, and I'm like, well, what can I do with that? Well, no one wanted this, and my wife and I inherited it, and I immediately thought, you know, she, she really couldn't use it, so I thought, man, I could use that for my 22 caliber uh, bore my patches, right? My Montana Extreme patches. So there you go. If you see that sitting on my bench, that's exactly what that is. What that is is easy, fast access. And I'm kind of a, um, I shouldn't say kind of, I'm extremely utility. I like things to work. I like them to work good and I like them to work fast. I'm very fast paced in what I do. Um, I'm thorough in what I do, but I just want things to work really good. So that works pretty good. So now, what I have, some more, these are 22 caliber patches by Montana Extreme. I highly recommend Montana Extreme, and I highly recommend that uh, um, I've always done this, anyone that's followed me, you know, I always backstock heavy on patches and 
gun cleaning products, right? I, I always kind of stay ahead of the curve on that, especially now the prices are going up. Get it while it's cheap, right? So, and then what do I have? More patches, big bore. Got to have, got to have lots of them, guys, right? And um, there's something I'll tell you is I like to clean gun. A lot of guys, they just don't like it. Man, you got to set your bench up so you like it, so you look forward to it, all right? So, okay, next, I'm going to have to reposition this bad boy. I'll tell you that right now. We're going to come over here like this, and I'm going to see more of the bench. Okay, there we go. So, I just told you guys um, that uh, Lucas has this uh, bore solvent that I use for cleaning my, my ties with. It's fabulous stuff. I'll tell you why I like this. One, it's, it's really effective on firearms, period. It does a good job. Has no problem, you know, took my uh, big old Smith & Wesson Model 629 out, nickel plated. Man, I dirtied that thing up. This cleaned it. I was shooting uh, cast bullets through that, and uh, I, I, I put anything I put through that, this cleaned, okay? What I like about this is it doesn't leave that solvent smell all the way through the house, and me, I have asthma, no problem. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, but what I also like about this is I can clean my dyes. Um, not that you can't with any other solvent, but it's got no odor. It's just, it's easy to use. So I highly recommend this. Good stuff. And you can use it in an ultrasonic tank. I don't own one, but you could do it. Okay. So um, you also get a bottle of this in your competitor pack. That's also included. Uh, CLP. Okay, this CLP, it, it wasn't part of the competitor pack. I went over to Sportsman's Warehouse and I bought this. I had to. Uh, Lucas products, they're, they're really good. So I thought, okay, you know, I'm sold. I want to try it. I can't tell you guys, I'm not going to review this. I haven't used it enough to tell you, but uh, anything Lucas puts out is good. CLP, great stuff. The, the temperature ratings on CLP, you know, the demands put on it, and being Lucas, you, you can't go wrong, okay? So there's our CLP. And, um, uh, and um, I'll talk a little bit about CLP and conventional oil in just a minute. And I'm also going to say something about not wasting your product. So just bear with me, okay? A lot going on here. And then um, also in the competitor pack, what you get is uh, right here. You get their Extreme Duty Oil. So I got their Extreme Duty CLP and then their Extreme Duty Oil. And what I did is I bought extra because uh, I really wanted to patronize Mark. He's really awesome. I wanted to give him my business. And I, once again... Everything's going up in cost. I got my oil to last a while, right? So that's just my personality. Now, okay. I just told you I was going to talk to you about don't waste your product. Um, a lot of product on the market can be, you know, geared to get you to use more of it. Don't do that. Just because you're about to see a lot of product hit my bench does not mean I waste it. I love the applicator, the needle applicator. A little goes a long way, all right? So you also get one of these in the competi competitor pack as well. So uh, very, very, uh, very good stuff. Very, very uh, nice pack. Now, what really got my attention in the competitor pack was this, the contact cleaner. You're saying, well, what's contact cleaner? Well, I'm saying... You know, for those of you guys that follow my channel over time, I talk about Action Cleaner, and I say, if you're going to buy Action Cleaner, you know, the Action Cleaner that you're going to, you, you don't want to disassemble uh, a firearm, you want to clean the action. So I say, just get the cheapest, just the cheapest, right? And I always show you guys that, because that's always the cheapest. Well, um, on the competitor pack, I got to add everything up, and I thought, man, I can't, I can't uh, beat this. So I ordered his competitor pack, but then I ordered a few more of these. And this is how I do my action cleaner. I've always done this. Um, well, I shouldn't say always, but for the longest time. I, I try and buy it bulk, like by the case or a bunch at a time. Then when I get down to two or three, I'll go and I'll replenish that, okay? I'm always doing something with guns and I always need it, right? And so uh, the contact cleaner... Now you don't have to disassemble nothing. You can clean it and you can go, right? It's pretty handy. 
So um, this also in the competitor pack. If you go over there, if I were you, I would order a couple more without a doubt because it's good stuff, right? Now, <laughs> I'm going to show you one that I highly recommend. I bought this at Sportsman's. I love Tetra. I do. This is also an action blaster, and it's got a good smell to it, too. I really like it. Uh, anything Tetra is, like, out of this world, okay? You can't, you can't beat Tetra. If, if someone's, like, bad-mouthing Tetra, just consider the source, right? Good stuff. Um, they, that's a company that's done their research. So there's, and, and it was on sale, so you can't beat that, right? Um, and I got the last three cans, otherwise I would have bought all ahead. So rim oil, I want to talk about rim oil. Um, what can you do with rim oil? I'm a huge rim oil fan. Let's say you find a firearm that's got a little bit of rust. Rim oil has Teflon. So if you were to spray a little rim oil on that and let it soak overnight, and then take your fingers and work it the next day and work it, and then take a little bit of double hot steel wool and just work it, and let it sit and work it with your fingers, a lot of time you get all that rust off and you won't upset the, the bluing. It's a great product for that. And it's also a great product just for uh, the sheer uh, qualities of its lubrication. Good quality uh, oil, right? So that, that's a fabulous product. Here we have, um, and I also got these on sale with that Tetra. I couldn't believe this. This was CLP. I, I love CLP. Uh, over the years, I went back and forth on it, but only based off what I've read. So I only, you know, I got on this thing of, I'm going to try it out for me, and I'm not going to tell you what I found out. you got to find out on your own the difference between a CLP and an oil. And I'll talk about that in a minute, but this is a CLP. But one thing that I do, and I, I, I kind of think it's kind of lost in the world, when I grew up and you were in a gun shop, every time you gave the gun back, they wiped it down. They put it away. They don't do that no more. Maybe it's because more polymer guns are, on the, uh, are in the world. But you know what? I still wipe my polymer guns down. I stain the habit of wiping all my guns down. Before you put it up, take care of it and put it away. It's an investment, right? So I always keep these around for wiping my guns. But CLP, uh, CLP, it has the ability to spread over a surface with very light force against it, pressure against it. So CLP is, is, is really wise to have. It's really, hang on, I'll tell you a little more about CLP. What I know, I'm not a pro. Okay, um, M Pro 7. Once again, another uh, CLP, very advanced. I, I really like M Pro 7. I think they're a great company. I bought this, um, this is their copper remover. I can't tell you anything about it. I haven't really used it. Um, over time, I'm not able to tell you, but I thought that since I really liked their CLP and their LPX so much, I thought, you know, I'm going to buy that and try it. And I saw it. It was a good price. I thought, oh, that's a good price. I'll, when I get the chance, as time passes, I'll use it. So a lot of what you see on my bench is just me getting the chance to use this product. Not to ever do a review, just so I know. I get to work with it, right? And so, um, but I like M Pro 7. I think that's a solid product. And who really got me going on M Pro 7 was GT Moral. You guys know GT, right? Go to 76highboy.com. You can find GT there. But he got me set up on M Pro 7. I was kind of using it, but once he reaffirmed my mind, what I thought was great, eh, guys, got to check M Pro 7 out. Very good uh, top quality product. Um, and there's uh, something else that I want to say. Um, in your uh, your gun cleaning kit, it's really wise to put two or three of these in a uh, these wipes, the CLP wipes, whether it's the Break Free or the Tetra. Put them in some lunch baggies and slip it in there. These go a long way, and that can case they can save you from. Uh, really uh, disasters out on the field. You got some CLP right there on a towel and that can save you, okay? So that's kind of thinking. That's kind of how I operate, okay? So uh, there we have that and now fire clean, okay? I'm going to tell you what I know about fire clean. Not a whole lot. I've been using it. It's not a bad, not a bad uh, lubricant. Um, it's an advanced gun oil. Um, once again, it was on sale and I thought, I'm going to try it. So I, I bought two, right? Um, that's just kind of my weirdness, I guess. You guys can all call me weird. It's okay. I won't get mad at you. 
And then I love my Montana Extreme. We got the Copper Killer. Just go check it out. Go check their Copper Killer out, okay? You guys have heard me talk about Montana Extreme uh, for a long time on my channel. I'm huge. Um, they're copper cream, basically old packaging, new, and they even have newer packaging now, I guess. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I, I really, uh, I tell you what, man, I, I dope on Montana Extreme. I just think they're like one of the greatest uh, companies, and they're gun oil. I'm going to talk about CLP and gun oil in just a second, okay? You're like, well, God, which one should I use? Hmm. I don't know which one I should use. Well, I'll talk to you about that. Give me just a second. Ooh, we got bore conditioner, rimfire solvent, just for your rimfire, right? Uh, good stuff. Yeah. All right. And then, um, of course, you can't beat it. There we go. Two big jugs of Montana Extreme bore solvent. Uh huh. Yeah. And that stuff is like, as soon as I empty one, and I buy another one, and um, I go right over to Sportsman's and I buy it, and then, and then what do we got here? Hoppy's number nine. Now you say, well, well, when do you use all that? When would you use uh, Montana Extreme Bore Solvent? And when would you use Hoppy's? And how do you know? And you got CLP, and you got oil, and how do you know all that? What are you using? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. It kind of goes like this, and this is just me talking. I'm not a professional, take what you want, leave what you don't, but I'll tell you this, like, if you're going to use a gun oil, you're going to have to start that job with a solvent. You have to go in and you're going to have to get that clean. And now your oil, it, your oil, you put it on that firearm for protection, but also so it functions properly. So reduced friction, hopefully no friction, right? A good quality oil is going to get you that. So if you're going to use oil, you're gonna have to go in and clean that, and then put your oil. CLP, ah, oh, military design. Um, hey, boots on the ground, you gotta clean as you go. Clean in the field, let's see, CLP cleans, lubes, and protects, does all three. Over the years, I went back and forth, because some people will tell you CLP kills itself or it can clean too much. I say, well, if you put CLP, it's always cleaning, always cleaning, so the C, it, it, it uh, you know, it, the C will uh, zero out the L and the P, so now it's over clean. You hear all this stuff, you read all this stuff, but I'll tell you this. CLP is good enough for the military. If it's good enough for the military, it's good enough for me. So how do I know which one to use? Well, I'm going to tell you guys this. I break it down like this. On my... Uh, Auto loading rifles, CLP. Why not? I'm not. I, I'm not even going to do an experiment with CLP on one and oil on the other one. Why experiment with something that the military's proven? I don't think I can out experiment the military, and I don't think you can either. Okay, unless you're that guy that you're in that world, you know lubricants. That's different. That's different. Um, and then when do I use an oil? Whenever I want, and whatever I want. And I'll tell you guys this, um, I, I do clean guns for friends. You know, I can clean a gun with CLP for this guy, because that's what he wants. And I can clean a gun with oil for this guy, because that's what he wants. And either one of those guys will always tell me how great their firearm worked. So all you gotta do, is whichever one you do, you just do it correctly. But stay out of this argument that CLP is not good. Stay out of this argument that, you know, traditional oil is the only way to go. Go out there and try it yourself. Be your own judge. And you know what? Make sure if you're a gun guy, you get a bench set up. So now I got two more. Oh, I'm not. Okay. Before I get to the last two things, on your um, on, on your cleaning supplies for your firearms. Don't waste them. One of the things that I shy away from in the advertisement 
is when I see it put in spray bottles used in high mounts. I'm not saying there's not an application for that. I'm not. But I'm saying it's easy to get carried away with that. Um, that's why I like right here. I, I really like these uh, applicators. You can get these through Montana Extreme. You can get them in a hobby shop. You can put on exactly how much you want. Um, I'll tell you this. Um, you know, right? But exactly how much you want. Uh, so I'll tell you this: when you're when you're cleaning a firearm and and you have that handgun here, it's one thing to see a little extra sol solvent, right? But it's another thing to see extra oil. Too much oil. Don't don't be doing that. Now CLP, because you're using that to clean, you might see a little excess of that, but you don't need a lot of excess because CLP goes a long way, right? Uh, as a matter of fact, if you were to take one of these and clean a whole firearm, you'd see how far one goes. It goes a long way right so don't don't waste uh, don't don't waste your money that you've got into your products right if you're going to use an action cleaner I only use enough to get the job done and that's all I don't just sit there and waste it and waste it As a matter of fact when I use my uh, my you know contact cleaner or my action I'm thinking about where I want to spray before I hit that button okay so um, I just wanted to say that now two last things if you're going to do work on your bench, make sure you keep your sawdust. Because guys, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting more and more into casting bullets, and this is the best flux in the world because it does, it works really good, and it's free, right? And um, oh, if your kid breaks those crayons at a local restaurant, don't throw them away. Those really work great for flexing your alloy, right? So the last thing, guys, I love this. I love this. I think this is great. I wanted to thank everyone for following the video. You're great. And um, that's what this was all about right there. And uh, the magnet, oh, <laughs> ah, the magnet works great. And, and uh, eh, I got another one right there, so we're all good. Um, I have, a, I have, Gun oil in my hands. I can't hold them. But I'm excited, so oh well. I'm I'm dropping everything. So um, there you go. I think that um, in ending this, I'll say now what this enables me to do is I definitely want to get another um, quick change uh, uh, top plate so I can have two vices. So the nice thing is I can have two vices set up on this. I can do an AR-15 build on one, or AR-10 build, whatever I want. Over here, I can have another rifle working on it, doing whatever I'm doing. Um, or I can have, uh, you know, uh, two vices, and, and this one maybe I have a sharpening stone, and that one maybe I've, I've got an, an, an axe in there that I'm going to sharpen, right? And guess what, in the middle of those, I can still, right here, work on a handgun. Maybe if I want, I'll remove everything so it's flat like that. I can put a gun out here, a nice rifle, and put a scope on it. So it's very versatile, right? So, um, is this set up for everyone? No, absolutely not. If you clean your gun once every three years, which I wouldn't advise that, clean it more often, especially if you're shooting it, this bench isn't for you. If you're cleaning your guns every three months, it might not be for you. But if you do a lot of projects, and you find that you clean your guns more and more, and you find you want to do that more and more, I would highly think about how you want your bench because the more user-friendly your bench is, the more that you're going to get into cleaning your, your farm and you're going to love it, okay? So there you go. Guys, I appreciate it. Long video, a lot to say, but man, what a great journey. So there we go. Guys and gals, that's the end of this video. God bless. We'll see you on the next.